This is session one, part two. Now, in the case of this person, uh, it's again a lady, I, I can feel, um, who basically is struggling with anger and rage. Yeah. And she's saying that she's had suppressed, she's suppressed her anger and rage for many, many years. Yeah. Well, yes, this is a problem. Suppression yeah. of anger and rage for many, many years is a problem. However, she likes to have the anger and rage within her. Mm -hmm. Because if she didn't like it, she would release it. So she likes it. So what I would do first is examine the reasons why having anger and rage within her is acceptable to her. Yeah. What she gets out of having anger and rage within her. Yeah. And she will find that people are automatically scared of her and she likes that. <laughs> mm. Because it gives her control over situations she otherwise would not have control over. Yeah. Right. So what she needs to do is examine with a pure heart the real reasons why she likes to be angry or why she likes to have anger within her at least. And there will be a lot of emotional reasons why a person wants to feel and never release their anger. A lot of it's to do too with feeling of weakness. They feel angry, anger makes them feel strong yeah. and powerful. And they are unwilling to feel weak and powerless. And so they become addicted to having the anger remain within them. Yeah. But there's also, this lady has some guilt about the anger remaining in her. She does. She does. So this is an indication that in her childhood probably, there's been some experiences where the anger was condemned or judged in some way, or even she was punished. So she's afraid of expressing it. Yep. Now, she is going to have to, at some point, go through acknowledgement of many of these emotions in order to start feeling her anger. Mm. And even when she starts feeling her anger, she's going to have to be very careful. Because if she's not careful, she will use her anger as a tool to feel powerful, rather than as a, you know, just feeling her anger alone in her bedroom and releasing it so that she can get to the addiction that is underneath it. It's this, always an addiction yeah. that's underneath the anger. It's, it's very interesting, isn't it, how um, you've spoken in many seminars saying to people, you need to release your anger. Like get, you often use the phrase, get out the baseball bat and go and yes. uh, beat the punching bag or whatever it yes. is. But this woman hasn't even tried that, I'd feel. No. And the reason why is she is already, she's justifying the, the uh, keeping of the anger inside of her. She doesn't really want to even attempt to release it. And yep. that, that is an issue and a problem. Yeah. So it seems like from what you're saying, the, just that act of getting the baseball bat and punch or bashing something is not necessarily the way we're going to actually release anger. Because not in we this have case. to work through these investments we have in maintaining it that you mentioned, things like control yes. and um, feeling of strength. And well, she's suppressing her anger yeah. for a start, so she needs to look at the belief systems that she has about why she needs to suppress her anger. So that could be about facade and things like and that. And that. that is a lot about facade, yes, about wanting to maintain a facade, wanting to look better than she actually feels inside and holding on to feeling that if people see her real anger and real self and how angry she actually is that no one will love her and no one will care for her. And there's a lot of other reasons why she would be suppressing her anger. And she needs to be sincere about finding them. Mm -hmm. And she's not, mm -hmm. at this point, sincere about finding them. She needs to allow herself to develop a sincerity to find the reasons why she suppresses her anger. Yeah. The second thing she needs to do is to find the reasons why she resists her anger, right? And that suppression and resistance are not always the same thing. They're not always the same reasons. For some people, they resist their anger for a different reason than they suppress it. So sometimes we suppress it because of how other people might feel and we resist it because we might feel something. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean we might feel yes. bad or we're afraid that we'll actually do something really bad when we're angry or yeah. something like that. And they are different fears that are causing us to resist. 
So she needs to look at the soul, how the soul functions in this aspect of suppression and resistance. Because these are the things stopping her from feeling her anger. Mm. And she needs to look at the belief systems that surround the reasons why she believes she should suppress and resist her anger. Yeah. And she needs to be sincere about this process of, of doing that. Then she'll at least start expressing some anger and then she's going to have to be very careful because inside of her there are some emotions where she wants to hold on to the anger because it feels powerful and in control. Mm -hmm. And there's a temptation going to be for her that when she starts expressing her anger, that she uses it to gain power and control rather than actually going into a bedroom and privately or being privately expressive of her own rage and just connecting to the rage itself. Yeah. So that's the course of action I would suggest that she takes. Now, she's going to find that quite difficult to take. And there are lots of reasons why. A person who's been suppressing anger for years and years obviously has some very strong investments in the suppression. And unless she's really sincere about those investments, it's going to be very, very difficult for her to allow herself to experience her anger. Mm. But she must understand that this is something to do with her will. She's going to need to have a strong will to get to that place. And it doesn't matter, you know, there's not going to be any other magical solution. There's not going to be someone or some event that comes along that, uh, that causes her to all of a sudden do it magically. She's going to have to allow the law of attraction to bring her events still, but she's going to have to soften to the, the feeling of anger that she has in acknowledgement and allow the expression of it in a private way so that she doesn't connect to these other addictions of maintaining power and control. Yeah. So it is going to be quite a difficult process for her to begin doing that. Now, of course, she can pray to her God to, God, to allow her to, to, you know, help, to help her, to bring events to her that trigger her anger so that <laughs> she can have a more sincere look at her anger. She can also ask for help from her guides to, to remind her to not go into the power place and not go into the wanting control over others when she experiences her anger, but rather remove herself to a place of personal safety and safety for others when she experiences her anger. Yeah. But she also needs to understand that her anger is driven by addiction and fear. Yeah. And at some point she's going to have to get beyond her desire to stay angry mm -hmm. and get into more of a desire to feel the addiction that drives it and then get into the fear that controls the addiction that drives her anger. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to mean softening to quite a few emotions that she's unprepared to soften to at mm. this point in time. I know she's unprepared because she's suppressing anger. <laughs> <laughs> if, if she wasn't suppressing her anger, she, um, she, she would be then feeling her anger, which means that she's prepared to feel her anger. <laughs> yeah. That she wants to feel her anger in her soul. At this stage, she does not want to feel her anger in her soul. And so I would look at why she does not want to mm. feel the anger in her soul. What her, are her internal justifications for retaining this anger within her? So why she thinks it's a good idea to stay the way she is rather than to change. Correct. Yeah. And she'll have very strong emotional investments, some of which involve other people and some of which involve herself. Mm -hmm about the reason why she wants to remain in this place of anger. Mm. The key is to allow yourself to feel every one of them. When you feel them, they'll release from you. And then once they release from you, you'll start feeling anger more readily. And then you'll have to be careful about how you experience your anger. And you'll have to start allowing yourself to see it's the addiction now that drives that anger. Yeah. And allow yourself to start feeling the addiction and your justification for the rage-based response to the addiction not being met. It seems to me that there's two ways that we can experience anger. And one is in a way that's quite harmful to others. Yes. And another is a way where it feels quite painful to ourselves. But, but it is, doesn't harm others. But doesn't harm others. Yes. And that second space is the space where change happens, we get more in contact with our addictions, yeah. fear is more evident, those things. Yes. There's a lovely scripture in the Bible and it says, be angry but do not sin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we sin, it means that when we, that's when we take the action to harm another mm. or harm ourselves yes. in our anger. Many people do that too. 
Many people get so angry with themselves that they're willing to suicide or, or take, you know, cut themselves and do other things towards themselves. Both actions are sinning. Yeah. You need to stop taking actions that are out of harmony with love towards yourself or another, but just feel the anger. And this is where most people, again, aren't prepared to go. They're not prepared to feel the pain that's involved with feeling anger. Mm. They want to act out their anger and start blaming the environment, someone externally for their anger, or even harming themselves for, you know, for having the anger, rather than actually just feeling the anger as an emotional experience. The most loving thing to do with anger is to feel it as an emotional experience and find the underlying addiction that covers the fear. Yeah. Because it's the addiction that covers the fear that is causing the justification for the rage. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to find it. Yeah. And we need to be sincere about finding it. And it seems that we also need to be sincere about breaking down the facade we have around our anger. Correct. This lady's saying, you know, she's used to being, uh, showing another persona to others. Yes. And um, lots of people, and lots of And there's a lot of, us... of fear in that. Yes. So, so. so there is, in her, there is fear of anger. Mm. And her fear of anger is a lot about things like, you know, what's going to happen to her if she experiences it. How will other people perceive her? Mm. Will she be punished? Will she be violently abused if she feels mm. a feeling of anger? And these, all of these kind of feelings come from our childhood generally where we have been violently abused when we felt angry or where we were afraid of the withdrawal of love when we got angry and so forth. And these are all feelings that need to be experienced before a soul change can take place. And it doesn't matter how much you maintain a facade and try to act lovingly, the real soul change will not occur until you feel your way through those emotions mm. and develop a desire. And obviously to do that, you need to develop a desire to feel your way through those emotions rather than reverting to the facade. Yeah. So what we notice a lot of people are attempting to do is they want to revert to the facade. It's like, you know, you go, here we go again, another <laughs> facade, you know. And then they say, then they, like we had a recent exchange of emails with somebody who we told her about her facade, she emails back another facade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we tell her about that facade, she emails back another facade. Yeah. And it's, when are you going to give up the facade and just say that you're really angry? <laughs> and, and, and stop making out that you actually got a handle of it and realise that you've got no idea what's going on. It's you know. so crazy, isn't it? Because we naturally respond to a person with less facade, and yet most of us are so invested in maintaining our facade. Aren't Correct, we? yeah. And we have all sorts of emotional reasons why we want to maintain the emotional facade. So we need to stop focusing on, you know, stop focusing on the facade itself and start focusing on why we wish to maintain it. Yeah. And that requires some sincere analysis of yourself emotionally. You need to feel about why, what you get out of the facade. Mm. You get other people thinking you're something you're not. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it's what you think. But I tell you what, a lot of people who have invested in facade on the earth after they pass into the spirit world are absolutely shocked because they realize there is no way they can maintain the facade anymore. And the only way they can any way maintain a facade is by coming back to earth, being invisible to other people. Mm. But because everybody they see in the spirit world sees exactly who they are. No facade. Right? And that's why a lot of people become earthbound, because they, they hate the idea that everybody can see them. Can see and that they'd rather stay here on earth where nobody can really see them. Yeah. You know? because they don't ever want to work their way through their desire for their own facade. Mm. And this is, again, uh, you know, we keep emphasising this in these emotional questions. The use of your will is paramount in solving every problem. Yeah. You need to use your will. You need to have a desire to address these problems before they're ever going to be solved. Mm. And that's where I see the majority of people struggling the, with the exercise of their will. They, they want a magical solution. Yeah. They want someone to come along and save them. They want somebody to cure them without them having to take any action. They want a pill for their problem yeah. rather than actually coming to terms with what's caused the problem inside of them and feel the pain associated with that. Mm. Mm. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>